the goal chapter nine. This is a great chapter. Just like all the others, you're gonna love it. Two main points we're gonna cover. We're gonna really get into what's going on with the robot at Alex's plant. Again, the name of the robot is the NCX-10. Um, but before we get to that, we, we find our hero, Alex Rogo, in Goldrot's The Goal, right? And, and you are seeing the world through Rogo's eyes. So Goldrot, with his novel and his unique approach to teaching us about the theory of constraints, really puts us in, by using a first person narration, in the, in the eyes and the feet and the hands of, of Rogo. So he ends chapter eight with Rogo at home, his childhood home, having talked to his mom. He wakes up there uh, and is talking with his mom. There's a weird throwaway joke where he says, uh, you know, oh, what about your father? And uh, Rogo says he, he died getting hit by a bus. So I don't know if that's uh, like some gallows humor, uh, having uh, had many friends who had served in the military and uh, friends from around the world. Maybe that's an Israeli sense of humor, uh, but a weird throwaway joke, I suspect, early on in the chapter. We move from Rogo's childhood home to he goes to the plant and with this uh, conversation that he's had with a mentor, with Jonah, uh, he really wants to get into what's going on with this robot. He, they, the company made a big deal of them getting these robots. They're going to improve the company's performance. But what we want to go back to is those kind of those three key metrics that we were talking about in the last chapter about you know throughput, about inventory, and about operational expense. And if we remember what uh, we're going to find here with Jonah's advice about throughput, he says throughput is the rate at which the system generates money through sales. And Alex's plant isn't making any more money with the robots, right? Like It's not like, oh, we put in robots and now we've doubled revenue. So the concept that we're getting at here is, well, what are we doing with the robots, right? And because the robots are the latest, coolest thing, uh, because somebody at corporate probably did a lot of work to justify the CapEx, what they're doing is building a lot of inventory ahead of the robots and building a lot of inventory downstream of the robots. So from a manufacturing standpoint, we're really increasing the whip in this plant, the work in process, without being able to convert that into revenue and then into cash flow. So we've, we've got kind of a vanity project that's going on that took the company away from its goal. We've talked earlier about how any action towards the goal is good, any action away from the goal is bad. And what we're seeing is that the robots, the NCX-10, weren't the constraint. The company spent a lot of money in an area, in a, in a place that doesn't improve its goal because the robots were not the constraint. They're not the constraint, they're not the constraint. And now, because they want to justify having the robots, which may have a faster process step, we don't really go into a ton of depth uh, about the robots. We, we're just building inventory ahead of them so we can watch the fancy robots move. And then we're building a lot of inventory downstream of them. And that's consuming our cash flow, which we're converting into an intermediate good. And we don't have customers who want to buy an intermediate good. They want to buy the final good. So really a great example uh, throughout the book, um, and that's really an example of waste and how valuable the theory of constraints is. And this first big example that Goldross gives us with the NCX-10, it's not that they found the constraint in their process and they fix it and everything's better. It's more this painful example of what happens in life when you do things uh, away from that constraint that it really is a huge distraction. You spend money in the wrong places, you build inventory ahead of processes that aren't important, you build inventory downstream of processes, and if you are in a corporate culture that uh, doesn't have a lot of accountability, that doesn't have a lot of honesty or integrity, it's really hard for someone to stand back and say, we've made a mistake, right? These are not the constraint, and what we're doing here is just wasting our time and investment. So uh, that's the summary on chapter nine. Uh, again, it's really all about the robots. It's about finding out that they are not the constraint, that the money that was spent there wasn't well spent, and that the more and more we pursue trying to justify that decision, the worse the company and the worse Rogo's plant does.